Hey everyone, I'm Victor Dwyer, and today I'm going to show you everything Looker Studio 101. Everything when it comes to creating your first data source, your first report, and then creating a dashboard that's perfect for your business. Let's dive right into it. So once you type in Looker Studio on Google, eventually create your Google account, you'll see something similar to this. We're going to the top left here, and we're going to press create, and we're going to press report. So once we have created this report, a prompt will come up where we have to connect some type of data source. A data source is what actually is getting pulled from directly to fill this Looker Studio dashboard with data. Usually there's some type of intermediate data source in the middle to take data from one place and put it to another. Today, we're gonna use Power My Analytics. They have a free trial. They're very easy to work with. There's a lot of other intermediate data sources you can use. Today, we're gonna use Power My Analytics. Basically, they'll send data from Facebook ads or any other data data source that you want, where you take Facebook ad data and Power My Analytics will extract that data from Facebook ads and send that to Looker Studio. That way, Looker Studio has the automated reporting and automatically fills that data for you. So let's go through that process. I'm going to type in Facebook here. I'm going to click Facebook ads by Power My Analytics, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill out these fields. Okay, so now that I have the fields that I want filled out for my particular account that I have created in Power My Analytics and now I've added into this data source, I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to click add. Once I do that, once I press the add button, a prompt will come up once I press that. And then it says, I'm going to press apply. And then you just keep going through the prompts. You're going to press add to report. And now I have my first data connection in my Facebook ad report. This is exactly where I want it to be. And then the next stage is I'm going to name this report. I'm going to call this test Facebook ad dashboard. So that's what I'm gonna call it up there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because this isn't gonna be relevant to me. So the first thing is I'm going to add my first KPIs. I'm gonna add my first charts that are important to me. KPI means key performance indicator, the numbers that matter to me. I'm gonna press add chart up here. I'm gonna go to scorecard. Scorecard is gonna show the KPIs that are important to me. And then I'm going to click on it and I'm gonna to go to the top right here and I'm gonna type the thing that I want filled. So what I really care right now about is the amount spent. So I'm gonna pull in the amount spent here. I'm going to drag it over to the metric and highlight it over it. So now it's going to be pulling in the amount spent. Next thing is date range is not showing no data because the date range selected yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a control here and I'm going to put a date range control. So this will be the date range that I have for this entire report right that I have right here. I'm going to select this year to date and I'm going to press apply. Now it shows something. So now it's going to show anything within this date range above. But what if I wanted to have one KPI that only showed lifetime amount of spend? Well, we can do that. So I'm gonna press Control C, Control V. I'm going to click on this one and I'm gonna press this little pencil right here and I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this Lifetime Spend, okay? And then under default date range, instead of auto, I'm gonna do custom. And under this custom, I'm going to press advanced. I'm gonna go 20 years back. So basically it's gonna do anything from 2002 to today, which basically means lifetime. Hypothetically, if you're older than 20 years, it would be less than that, but put it really far back and that basically gives your lifetime amount of spend. Okay, perfect. I'm going to enter in one more chart that is important to me as a scorecard and I'm gonna pull in the impressions. So that is the next thing that is important to me. Perfect. And I do the same exact thing. So I have the amount spent, the impressions, and the lifetime amount of spend. But now I want to see what is happening on a daily basis. How can I see the progress over time? Well, the easiest way to show that is through a time series chart. Let's go to the chart and then let's do a time series chart. So we're going to go ahead and add that. So now it's already showing and filling out the amount spent over time, which is really cool, which is helpful for me. But I also want to pull in the amount of impressions and I want to add that as well. So that way I can see the amount spent and the impressions that I'm having over on the account. So if I spent $39, I got a thousand impressions on that particular day. So I'll be able to see that and see that over time and how that's changing. And it's very, very cool to see that kind of data. Next thing that we're going to look at is I want to see how we're doing on a surface level, on what's happening high level on the account. But how do I see on a campaign status on an ad level? Well, the best way to do that is through tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press add chart and I'm going to add a table. Perfect. So now that I added the table, I'm going to put in campaign name in here and then I'm going to to go and drag it over and so instead of putting it as a metric you have to remember the difference between a metric and dimension a metric is any number that you have but a dimension could be a date it can be a name um, a word or an image like anything that is not specifically a number value that is what a dimension is so a campaign name you see how it says abc on the left side of the campaign name that means it's going to be a dimension in this case so that's what we're going to fill out right now okay so i have it dragged over where it says campaign name over to the dimension now and then it also also has the impressions there but I 
also want to pull in the amount of spend because the spend is very important to me. So I'm going to drag over the metric over to spend and now I have the spend data. So now I have the campaign name, the impressions and the amount spent. I want to put a really good title on this. So I'm going to press the text button up here and then I'm going to put a text box here and I'm going to do campaign performance. Okay. That's exactly how I want it to be. And then I'm going to copy and paste that over. I'm going to do and go over to this side. I'm going to press that. And then instead I'm going to do ad performance and do it the same way. Okay. So I'm going to copy over this table. So now I have ad performance on this. What I want to do is I'm going to press X on the campaign name here, and then I'm going to do ad name here. Since we're pulling the ad level, I can also pull the ad image in here. And this will also be a dimension. So remember it's a dimension since it's anything else. And now I'm actually pulling in the images of the ad specifically, which is really, really cool. And that's exactly how we want it to be. And now we can see the ad images here and really see everything that's kind of happening on the account. We can see the impressions, the amount spent, the image and everything else. It's really important to understand how data aggregation works, meaning that you can't just put an ad name in the campaign performance because you have to think about it. It can only attach to one thing is the best way to think about it. So for example, if you have one campaign name and you have four ads in that campaign, you can't put the ad name dimension in the campaign name dimension table or it will break the table because basically the Looker Studio is going to say, hey, there's one thing here and four things here. I don't know how to match them. So you have to have some level of data aggregation to where it makes sense, where one thing is always pointed to one thing. That way it's aggregated correctly. That's why I'm able to pull images for the ad performance but not pull images for campaign performance because there's going to be multiple images and multiple ad names under campaign performance where I cannot aggregate that data because there's going to be too many points of connection and Looker Studio is not going to know what to do. But now that I have an ad level performance, I can pull in that ad image data very easily and be able to pull that in. It's a kind of a complex topic, but it's going to help you in the long run to really understand. So if your table keeps breaking, that's why. And then let's title this at the very top. So I'm going to press Control C, Control V. I'm going to call this test Facebook ad dashboard to make this pretty. And I'm going to make this way bigger. Beautiful. It really helps if you make this colorful. So I'm going to press this square icon up here. I'm going to highlight over this. Okay. And I'm going to make this blue and I'm going to send this back. I'm going to right click order, send the back and I'm going to spread out our KPIs to where we want them. Okay. I'm also going to do a rectangle behind our campaign performance and I'm going to make this red order, send it back. And then I'm going to press control C, control V. I'm going to make this green order in the back. Now we have a beautiful looking dashboard with colors, um, different arrays. We have it titled, we have the date range and everything that you kind of need to create an effective dashboard here. Every data source is going to be a little bit different, but for the most part, you're going to understand at least how to add metrics, dimensions, and different charts to Looker Studio. If you were wanting to share this report, you can go to the top right here. You can schedule email delivery. You can schedule it on a daily basis, weekly basis, particular time. You can send it to your team, to your clients, whatever you kind of need here. And you'll be able to schedule these out Via email. If you're wanting to share access, you can add email addresses directly, or you can send specific links with either edit access or view access very easily. That is going to be kind of an overview on everything you need to get started with Looker Studio. We're going to create future videos on really how to dive in and make this a little bit more built out where there's filtering and a little bit more to it, but this will get you enough to get started. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.